Yo, what up everyone? In this video, I wanna go over a very important tool on TOS. It's honestly very crucial to use. If you don't use it, you're at a severe disadvantage. It's gonna save us time. It's also gonna save us money on the back end, and it's gonna allow us to keep profits that we might not have had if we use the normal order entry tool. So this is gonna help us with order entries and also market theory, understanding the participants, the buyers and the sellers, along with liquidity, and spreads. So we're gonna get into how to customize yours to look like mine, how I use it, and what it actually is in general based off of Active Trader. Before we get into it, I would appreciate it if you could hit that subscribe button. And if you want a very good trading resource, I recommend following me on Instagram. I will link it in the description below, at Investitrade. I post daily trading recaps on here, along with very good trading tips and tricks that I guarantee you, you're not gonna find anywhere else. Link in the description below, definitely recommend following this. But now let's get right into the video. First, briefly, let's get into what Active Trader is. It's not only a very crucial and important order entry tool, this is gonna save a couple of seconds on the back end, and a couple of seconds might make us more money in the long run. Uh, but it also gives us very key and important information about the market's auction that we cannot see based off of the chart. Active Trader essentially is a depth of market. It's a price ladder that represents price from buyers, price at sellers, and volume by price on a vertical axis. This is very similar to level two. You all know what level two is. The bid is the buyers. The ask or the offer are the sellers passively sitting building liquidity onto the market. The active trader is essentially the same thing. Now to get yours to look like mine, let me max or minimize this. Uh, all you have to do is click this little settings icon right here that says customize, click customize, pause the video. And if you want yours to look identical, make those little things the default. Now what this shows is the price. If you insert, let's just say Apple over here, right? This is gonna put the price of Apple it's going to show all the bids or the buyers. It's going to show all the asks or the sellers by price. It's specific to that price point. And it's also going to show volume by price on somewhat of a histogram, which is very key about the market auction. We also could add option contracts in here, which is going to save the day on the end on the backside when we look to enter buy or sell options. Now also on the top, let me maximize this. There's a little another settings icon. Could copy these i'm going to explain why i have these as we get into the example but those are the standard columns i have and then yours should look like mine one thing i do have on here is profit and loss it's going to show me my profit let's just say i got in at two bucks if the contracts go to two dollars and thirty cents it's going to tell me how much i could make if the contracts are at two dollars and thirty cents i do not recommend looking at your profit and loss if you do trade so that's totally optional i recommend taking that off let me minimize this. So that's essentially what I have on mine and how I use it. It's, it's very, very simple. So let's just get out of Active Trader here and let's just look briefly off of technical analysis on the NASDAQ. Now I trade based off of price and volume analysis, supply and demand, but volume price. And essentially when we are at a supply zone, we look to take the market short as long as there's valid confirmation. So now we just have to act like, you know, it's nine... 10 o'clock when the market's opened up and I'm ready to short NASDAQ when it starts moving down. So what I normally would do here if I didn't use Active Trader is go to my trade tab, type in QQQ if I'm trading the NASDAQ's options, and I would go pick whatever contract I'm looking to trade. I would click this. I would go here. I would edit my quantity. I would edit my expiration, my strike, the price. I would edit the limit price, edit the order type, I would go to confirm and send. It would bring me to a con confirmation screen and I would hit send. Now in that little time period, it would probably take me 20, 30 seconds before I actually get an order on the market and either remove or uh, add liquidity to the market. Now that 30 seconds could be a breaking point. Maybe the contracts went up 10, 20 cents and I'm minimizing my risk or I'm mi maximizing my risk and I'm minimizing my reward. So that little brief 30 seconds that it took me to edit my option contracts is going to hurt me on the back end 
subconsciously because I don't realize if I used Active Trader, I could have got in a little earlier. So instead, what I do on Active Trader is I will right click any option I'm looking to trade. At that point, NASDAQ hits apply. Uh, I would want to trade the QQQ 392 puts. I would click copy. Also, what you could do is click send to. And I have mine linked to number nine. If you go to your Active Trader chart, you see how I have a linkage here. You could click number nine so it's linked. So no matter what I send to that number nine little uh, color, it's going to go there. So now, right off the bat, I have QQQ 392 puts loaded up on my Active Trader. I also have the chart right here side by side to that. So if I'm looking to trade this, I'm going to maximize this. Keep in mind, uh, NASDAQ sells off from supply. So this was a trade that would have worked out. I know the contracts went up uh, about 53% from low to high. So nice gain off of that in a 30 minute period. So let's just say I'm ready to buy puts. There's multiple ways you could do this. This depends on your aggression. If you are aggressive, you're looking to remove liquidity from the market. I only recommend it if your spreads are, are very, very tight a maximum of six cents, maybe even seven or eight cents, then you could actually remove liquidity from the market and use a market order. So that's why I have my two buttons up here for buy the ask. Essentially what this is gonna do is I'm removing liquidity, I'm hitting the market, I'm buying the ask from a passive seller sitting on the ask. That's if I'm looking to long a position. If I'm looking to sell, I'm looking to exit my position and I wanna be aggressive with it, spreads are tight, they are under six to eight cents, then for me to exit my position, I have to click sell the bid if I wanna use a market order and remove liquidity from a passive buyer sitting on the bid side. Now constantly, active trader is flickering up and down. The middle number, whatever is highlighted, is the last traded price on the market. That is the last completed transaction. You're gonna see ask and bids constantly change throughout the day. The top number bid, whatever it has in the bid size, is our inside bid. And the bottom number ask is going to be our inside ask or inside offer. So essentially, if we were to look at the level two, at this point, we have 220 on the offer and 216 on the bid. Those numbers match up. Everything on the level two is going to match up with everything on the active trader. It is just a vertical way to look at the level two. So constantly it's moving. Now let's just say we're looking to play QQQ puts at that same point, but maybe spreads are wide. I'm going to show you an example on Amazon or Tesla in a bit when you should be doing this, but let's just say spreads are 20 cents or 30 cents. It would not make sense for us to market order and remove liquidity into the market because right away off of slippage, we can be losing a lot on our position without us not doing anything. It's just the market wasn't very liquid and automatically we could be down on our position and put ourselves in a hole before the market even moved. So with stocks like QQQ, Apple, SPY, AMD, stocks that have low spreads, this is why I have a sell the bid, buy the ask up here. Let's just say the spreads were 20, 30 cents. Not only does Active Trader let me put market orders, it also lets me put limit orders. So let's just say the last completed transaction was 221. I want to add liquidity to the market. Let's just say I want to buy these contracts at $2 and a two, two bucks flat, let's just call it. I could click the bid price down here and watch what happens. It's going to get canceled because I have $0 in my account. I don't have any buying power. But this is going to put a limit order for $2 on the bid. So when the market comes down to two bucks, and somebody aggressively hits my liquidity sitting on the bid, it is gonna get filled. Let's say I wanna buy at $1.90. Come down here, I click the bid size, and my order is gonna go through. It's gonna be waiting there for someone to sell to my buy order aggressively. Now let's say I wanna get out of my position, or I wanna short the market. I could put a sell order up here, let's just say $2.30, and it's gonna sit up there until it's filled. So you could not only do a market order, you could also do a limit. I recommend doing limits on stocks. For example, let's pull up uh, Amazon right here. So Amazon rejected supply today. Nice sell off, uh, about maybe 80 bucks. So crazy move on that. Let's pull up the Amazon option contracts. 
at this point, Amazon was at 3540. Most likely would have played the 3500 puts. They're the most liquid, have nice volume, have nice open interest. I could control V them into there. And if you were to look at Amazon, if I make this bigger, see how the spreads are inside bid is $38.10 and the inside offer is 38 bucks and 85 cents. If I were to use a market order right now, most likely I'm gonna get filled at 39.40, 39.50. And if I were to sell at that same exact second, I literally click the buy and then literally click the sell button, I'm gonna lose about 70 cents per contract. If you're trading 10 contracts, that's 700 bucks in a one or two second period. So that's why I recommend using limit orders on options that are very uh, illiquid. Liquid, you can definitely market order. Now up here, we're also gonna have the quantity. You could adjust how many contracts you're looking to trade. Maybe I'm trying to do 200. I could type in 200. Maybe I have them preset to 2, 50, you know, 10, 30. You could edit those numbers. Um, all you have to do is go to setup, application settings, go to active trader. Make sure your rate limit is set to zero. You don't want to have any delay. I have mine recentering every three seconds. Those two checked on. And if you go to order defaults, you could customize how you want your orders, the quantity increment and stuff like that. So it's fully customizable. You could make it one contract, three contracts, five contracts, you know, depending on your size. Another thing I recommend to speed up the process is make sure auto send is on. If this is not on, what's going to happen is you're going to click this and it's going to put you through an order confirmation screen. Then you're going to have to click send. It delays it by a couple of seconds. So I don't, I recommend using auto send. You have to be careful with that though, because if you accidentally, you know, hit a button or your dog steps on your keyboard or, you know, your son clicks the mouse, your whole account could be in a trade and you don't even realize it. So, so I'm using the on demand feature on TOS. So it's not going to be very, very accurate, but I want to go back and show you what I would do with active trader in a live scenario. So let's just say the S and P is bouncing off of a demand zone. We start moving up and we get proper confirmation to play calls. So what I would normally do is go to the option chain. I would click this. I would edit, you know, my quantity, edit my price, right? So that, that takes way too long. That's garbage. Throw it out the window. Instead, what I would do is either copy it or go to send to, send it to number nine, go back to the chart. I would now assess what my active trader looks like, how liquid it is, and what are the spreads. Like I said, on demand is a little... Uh, garbage, but so these aren't going to be realistic, but let's just say it was 113 by 115. It was a two cent spread. What I would do in this case is I would buy the ask and what's going to happen. Boom. I just got filled 30 contracts. Now, uh, what you could also do is go up here, go to uh, position indicator. You could add that as well. And this is going to tell me how many position, how many contracts I'm in. So it's going to highlight the price that I'm in, $1.15. And on the right, like I said, it shows your profit and loss by price. I do not recommend having that up because subconsciously that is going to affect your decisions. It is not good to look at your P&L when trading. And let's just say I want to sell at, you know, $1.20. I could click that. Now, if you look at the option chart, I got a pending order at 30, 30 contracts at $1.20. I can cancel it if I want. I can cancel it up here. Cancel all. Now it's gone. I can maybe lower it to a dollar seventeen, or maybe a dollar eighteen, and boom, I got filled at a dollar eighteen. I'm out my full position. I got nothing left. It's not highlighted, and in one click of a button, I could buy right there. I'm in. One click of a button, I could sell. Let it fill. Let's say it doesn't get filled. Maybe I want to lower it. Maybe I want to go to a dollar sixteen. Got my order at $1.16, doesn't get filled. Maybe I could keep it there. Come on, on demand, I'm filled, I'm out. So on one click of a button, as long as my auto send is on, I could get in and out. I can make, make fast trading decisions. I could edit this. I can make it full screen without a chart. There's so many different ways to customize how you want it. I could put it on my left chart maybe. I could put it on my bottom chart. Uh, so just get creative with it play around with it. But this is how I buy from using TOS. This is how I sell.
very fast, very easy. Maybe I want to sell the bid. Just remove this order, click sell the bid, and boom, I'm out as long as spreads are tight. So keep that in mind. Play with it. It's If you are not using this, you are at a very big disadvantage on Thinkorswim. This made me a lot of money, and this saved me a lot of money as well. Very good tool. If you have a fast PC, you run TOS smoothly, I recommend using this. You control the price. You could remove liquidity. You could add liquidity. You can control your full order. And if you, you know, let's just say we want to trade shares. Let's just say we want to trade Snapchat, for example, right? So screw ES, screw the S&P. Let's go to Snap. Snap's trading at, you know, 53 bucks. Let's just say I want to buy it. I'm just going to let it load up. I could buy the equity right on here. Literally go to 52.97. I'm filled now. 52.97, 50 shares. I'm long 50. Maybe I want to sell at 53 bucks and two cents, or 53 bucks on the dot. I would wait for 53 to get hit. I'm selling, you know, at a dollar 50 profit. Wait for that to get hit, and when it hits, let's just lower it just to get filled. Again, on demand is very slow. So when you're doing real trading, this is going to be more realistic. But let's just say I have a limit at, well, let's just sell the bid. Now I'm out. I got no position. Nothing's highlighted. I'm 50 by 50 and I sold for a $4.50 loss. Very good tool. Check it out. So I think I'm going to end you on that, video, on that note. I don't want to make this video too long. If you want to learn more, check out the links in the description below. I offer a very in-depth and educational course. That will come with access to the Discord and no extra cost. I plan on adding videos very soon. And I plan on being more active in the voice chat feature that I recently added. But besides that, I'm ending it. Drop a like, subscribe, peace out.